for a long, long time as a rapper that that was our claim to fame before the championship. Oh yeah. It was, oh yeah, you guys are the guys that Kobe scored in. <laughs> yeah. That was before, before Drake put us up in that. Yeah. yeah. With the 81 points. 81 points. Yeah. That's a tough one to follow. That's a tough one to follow. 20, okay. Okay, okay, okay. He thinks he got Try to catch me hollering at the moon. Welcome to the Find About Nothing. I'm your co-host, Nick Flair, alongside the Revolution. We're introducing a new segment today. It's called Red Cup versus Blue Cup. Now, the premise is simple. It's a three-round battle in which we take two similar entities and we try to determine a victor. But this time around, being our first segment of Red Cup, Blue Cup, we want to dedicate this to Kobe Bryant. Based on the tragic events that happened on January 26th, we really want to honor his death by introducing Red Cup, Blue Cup. This time around, we're going to be talking about Kobe when he was number eight versus 24. Those are two iconic numbers, and it's very difficult for you to pick one. We have no idea as to, well, I have an idea because I labeled the cups, but Reg has no idea as to what number is behind what color. So he's going to pick a cup now, and he'll either get number eight or he'll get number 24, and then we will start the segment. And what I'm really hoping for is that because I'm wearing this jersey, that I'm going to be picking number eight. So here I go. You sure you want that? Blue, blue is like my favorite color. You sure you want that one? But I feel, I'm feeling, because you know that was my favorite color and I'm wearing Kobe's number eight. Probably I'm, I'm good with either. Kobe was great in both. Turn around. Ah! There it is. I, I'm I Kobe is great no matter what number he was. I'm I'm perfectly fine with eight or twenty-four. Cheers. Kobe. Kobe, it's for you. Okay, so um the way that this is going to work is that the resolution is going to pick uh the topic for the first round, and I'm gonna have to respond to uh whatever he's choosing to go with. So, number eight, Kobe Bryant. Okay. We're talking about championships, and numbers don't lie. Being number eight, he won three championships in a row. Okay, um, he's got me there. Uh, Kobe did win three championships wearing the number eight, as opposed to wearing the number 24, in which he won two championships. I suppose the only counter argument I can I have to these uh two eight versus twenty-four is that if you count the value of these championships, um if I if I do recall correctly, and I'm pretty sure I'm I'm right about this, uh during those three championships, Shaq was the final finals MVP. Right? He was. Shaq was the finals MVP. In his two subsequent championships uh against the Orlando Magic and the um, Boston Celtics. That was a great series, actually. Uh, in those two championships, Kobe was the finals MVP, and he was an NBA, NBA MVP uh, in that interim. So what I would say is that, yes, you're correct that um, Kobe did win three championships as opposed to two, but I believe that the value of those two championships holds more weight uh, as Kobe was the undisputed leader of those two championships. You do bring up some valid points. Two championships that he won, you know, on his own per se. Not really on his own because he obviously had a team with yeah, him. Paul Gasol, yeah, Paul Gasol. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he didn't obviously have Shaq with him during those two championships. Right. But the three, I felt, were just so just... Ex it was an exciting time for LA. And that team was a special team. That team would, you know, be, be compared to the Bulls, right? Right. In terms yeah. of, you know... The dynasty that they had with Shaq, they had Glenn Rice, they had abundance of you know just young talent on that team, bringing them to that three peak. Okay, yeah, I won't dispute that Shaq and Kobe is a better duo than anybody that Kobe's been paired with, most notably Paul, Paul Gasol. But um, again, if we're just talking about Kobe's legacy and not a Laker legacy, I'm gonna say that these two championships that if we're just talking about Kobe. And we're just talking about eight versus twenty-four. Okay. We're not just talking. We're not talking Lakers. I think the two championships that Kobe won as twenty-four hold more value than eight. 
Okay. No. I, I see. And you know what? That's fair. That's fair. So now we're going to move on to the next okay, so, portion of this. Okay. So now it's now going to be my turn. Uh, since the resolution had his turn to pick his topic, his topic was um, championships. I am going to go with my topic, which is actually leadership uh, for uh, for my uh, for my round. Uh, Kobe is 24, uh, became many things. He became um, became an MVP. He became a league ambassador. He became a global icon. Not to say that he wasn't this at, at, as number eight. But as number 24, when he trans, like, kind of transformed into the Black Mamba, he just became this global superstar and people started to tend to follow him. And I'm talking about his teammates, really. Um, as, as 24, he was the undisputed leader of that team. He was the Lakers, right? He had other young kids that were coming up under him. He had, um, he had other all-stars that were looking to join him on that team. Uh, whereas he wasn't the young phenom Kobe that the Froby that was dunking all over the place. He was this elder statesman as 24 that groomed a lot of people. There's a lot of NBA players right now, most notably Kyrie Irving. Um, I would say DeMar DeRozan is uh, missing out a bunch that just idolized Kobe and his Mamba mentality. And I believe that this was really, this really was cr- created, uh, during his, 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 his second half of his career. No, those are good points. But in terms of leadership, Kobe, number eight, you, he was a leader from the time that he came into this league, from mm-hmm. the time that he was drafted out of high school. Um, he was picked by Charlotte, and he pretty much orchestrated that trade from Charlotte uh, yes, yes. to the Lakers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Vlade Divax went from the Lakers to Charlotte in his place. He was a great player, too. Right. But you could tell from right, you know, right from jump, he knew exactly what team he wanted to be on, the dynasty that was going to form between him and himself and Shaq. He knew it all along. And yeah, he kind of came into the league with a chip on his shoulder, but that was just his edge, right? Mm-hmm. He was hyper competitive, hated Vince Carter, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we talked about in his book where he would actually circle Toronto every time, you know, he had to go up against Vince Carter. Mm-hmm. Right? But in terms of leadership, yes. You know, there was Shaq, which was Big Brother. Right. We know that, mm-hmm. right? And Shaq would always try to kind of keep him in that little box as Little Brother. Right. But Kobe would never cower from what Shaq was trying to, you know, in terms of placement, right. of being in that little box. He never, you know, kept that place. He said, you know what? I'm going to be the leader on this team one day. And Shaq, you know, you got to play the, you know, you got to play the beat of my drum. Right. No, that that's its own form of leadership. Sometimes when we think of leadership, we think of it in a sense of having people follow you. But sometimes being a leader, I guess, just to your point, sometimes being a leader is someone who doesn't necessarily follow the crowd all the time. And um, it'd be tough not to follow Shaq. Shaq was the most dominant player in the game. And and uh, he had like the world in the palm of his hand. He was the MVP. He was a three time finals MVP at the time, too. It would be tough to say, you know what? I want to do my own thing. And I believe that I can be the best player in the world. Actually, Kobe actually believed he could be the best player of all time. Yep. Um, and for him to, 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 to stick to that belief, um, and to keep with it, that is definitely a form of leadership. Um, I, I, I can say that you, you can't go wrong either way in terms of, uh, in terms of the leadership point. That was pretty good. Cool. All right. So final closing argument. Most memorable moments, okay. eight versus 24. Okay. So I'm going to talk about two memorable moments right here. The most iconic lob of all time. I know what you're talking about. June 3rd, 2000, oh, Western gotta... Conference Finals. Portland joint. Yeah, yeah. Against Portland. Uh-huh. My man Kobe, top of the key. Crosses over Scotty Pippen, gets into the lane, lobs it over to Shaq. Shaq slams it home. And, and all you see is Shaq going like yeah, this. Yeah, he does the running, the hands up, and then the hug, right? And then the oh, hug. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's good. You got another one? <laughs> the other one I got. Okay. Or No, you know what? Go to yours and then we'll go to mine. Okay, so my first one is actually, I read this in a book by um, Tim Grover. 
Tim Grover was uh, Michael Jordan's trainer. He was D Wade's trainer. Uh, yeah, you know I heard what I'm talking about. about? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, yeah. Uh, he's amazing. Yeah, so he was Michael Jordan's trainer. He was uh, uh, D Wade's trainer, and he was Kobe's trainer. And he always said that Kobe was the one who pers- like he thought that Michael Jordan was driven, but he said Kobe was the most driven. And he, and he gives the story uh, in 2012 that just perfectly personifies how driven Kobe was. So 2012 All Star Game. Uh, D Wade's playing Kobe a little bit too tight. And I think he elbows Kobe in the face. And Kobe suffers a broken nose and a concussion. Right? Jeez. So D Wade's playing, D Wade's probably feeling awful, but it's the All Star game. You, you see what All Star games right. look like now. It's like 200 to 300 or whatever. And it's like watching, you know, it's like playing NBA 2K. Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, and, and, and D Wade's feeling bad because I guess he, he was playing against his idol and he just wanted to show him up or whatever, whatever the, Whatever the case was, D Wade calls him up and he's just like, Hey, Kobe, I'm real sorry. And then Kobe says, No, nah, I like that. I like that. Keep that. Keep that fire. And D Wade's like, Okay, and see you later. And hangs up the phone, right? And Kobe didn't take any time off from the broken nose and the concussion. Instead, I don't know if you remember when Kobe was wearing the mask. Oh, yeah. So Kobe, cause so for a, for a brief time, Kobe, was, and he even had the black one. He looked like, uh, looked like Batman or like Kato from the Green Hornet. Yeah. And so he was wearing the mask and he, three days later, he played the Heat and the Heat at the time had LeBron, him and, and Bosch. Oh, yeah. The Heatles. The Heatles, yeah. And Kobe came back and he just destroyed, cause D-Wade was on him. He just destroyed D-Wade that game and the Lakers took, took that game from the Heat. So that's, that's, that's my, Jeez, that's a, yeah. man, that brings back memories for yeah. sure. All right. My second most memorable moment. Ah, this one hurts, but I loved it so much. Okay. What is it? January 22nd, 2006 against our hometown. Mm. It's Toronto Raptors. 81 points in a single game. Do you remember that game? I do remember that game. I do. Okay, so, so, so. Look, here, no, no. Lakers were down that game. Lakers were down. Lakers were down. Kobe, he, he was struggling for his half. Here's the thing, though, man. I remember the coach of the Raptors at the time, Sam Mitchell. Why did he not double team Kobe? He's Kobe Bryant. He's Kobe Bryant. He never chose to double team Kobe at any point in that game. That 81 points, 81 points is impressive. Sam Mitchell not double teaming Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was hitting everything. Kobe Bryant, everything. he was throwing it off his shoe, kicking the ball, goes in the basket. Second half, he just tore it up and just killed these guys. Eighty-one points. They got in this day and age, we're not talking about Wilt days where Wilt scored the or, hundred or, points. Or game. we're not even talking about Steph, like or the the three point thing. He was doing it everywhere, right? Oh, he was going in. He was going out. Like Kobe diced them up, and for a for a long, long time, as a Raptor fan, that was our claim to fame before the championship. Oh, yeah. It was, oh, yeah, you guys are the guys that Kobe scored 81 on. <laughs> yeah. That's that was, was before Drake put us on the map. Yeah. There was the 81 points. 81 points. points. 81 yeah. points. That's a tough one to follow. That's a tough one to follow. 20, okay. Okay, okay, okay. He thinks he got me. Hold on. I got I got something. I got something. Okay. Um, I don't know the dates. You, you seem like you just. I did my research. I remember. Yeah, you, you Wikipedia God right now. Um, but I don't have the date. All I know is uh, one of the moments, the defining moment for me, for Kobe Bryant. And when I speak of Kobe, a lot of the time, the things that I like about him is his his, his personification of never give up, the Mamba mentality. Um, like it, it leaks out into our everyday lives. Even when we were doing this podcast, remember that that when we when our podcast looked like garbage, we still might, but. There's levels though. There's levels. But there's levels we were at the dirt level and we were just really, we had worked 10 hours and we were like, yo, Mamba mentality. And we came back here. This was like a couple months ago. Anyhow, um, getting to the point. So Kobe is playing the Golden State Warriors and he's like driving hard right. And then he just falls to the floor. And then you hear the announcer saying, oh, we think that's his Achilles. We think that's his Achilles. And in basketball, Achilles is like, if you blow your oh, Achilles, yeah, you're pretty like, much done. Yeah, you, like, you're going to retire. Like, mm-hmm. that's, yeah. that's just the end. There's been a lot of basketball players besides, I think, Dominique Wilkins is the only one that came back. Yeah. But, um, when Kobe went down, 
like we've seen it this year with Kevin, like last year actually with Kevin Durant. When Kevin Durant blew his Achilles, he's not walking off of under his own power. Nobody's walking off under their own power. Not only did Kobe walk off under his own power, so he blows his Achilles, falls to the floor. He's holding his, he's holding the back of his, his ankle, which is where the Achilles is located. And instead of being carried off or like walked off, like under the assistance of everybody else, he walks to the free throw line, hobbles himself, just kind of just mama stutter steps to the free throw line. And then he nails both free throws and then walks with under his own power to the locker room. Like to me, that's, I've never like, yeah, that nobody's is, that doing is, that. That is an iconic. Nobody's moment. doing that. that. Is that is nobody's doing. They be like, nah, just take me to the back room. Oh, Grandma, you blow your chili. We're done. Blow your chili. Come on, stretcher. I'm out. You know, first thing you're thinking about is is obviously you're probably like my career, the money, the fame. He's thinking I gotta finish. I got. I'm going out. If, if this is, wow. I know if this is the last shot. Obviously, he came back after that. But if these are the last moments of my career. I'm walking, I'm hitting these free throws, and then I'm walking back, which was, that's Kobe Bryant. And that's the black mama mentality. For sure. And this is why we love this guy. And we miss him already. It's crazy. 100%. So usually what would happen is that we try to tell you guys to determine a winner, but like we're, we're, we're not doing that today. Um, today. We're, we're actually all winners for having to get to witness, uh, the greatness that is Kobe Bryant. But we would appreciate your comments, you know? We encourage you and invite you guys to, you know, provide your own most, you know, memorable moments of Kobe Bryant, whether it be 8, 24. We want you guys to get involved in this conversation. You know, we all miss Kobe. So many fond memories. And, you know, there's so much that we can learn from that incident, right? You know, life is too short. Really enjoy the moment. We, you know, tomorrow is not a promise to anybody. That is a number. Yeah, about a simple. Okay. All right, he goes.